March 25th, 2024. How are you doing? My name is Brad Martinez. Hope you have a wonderful day, are having a wonderful day, or have had, depending on your time. Now, today I'm going to talk about my long-distance relationship and what I feel about long-distance relationship and some some things that I have done within my long-distance relationship for it to work. So, let's a little talk about that. First of all, we're going to talk about how I feel about it. Now, if you ask me, hey, what do you think? Do you recommend long-distance relationship? I would say, hell no. No, definitely not. Don't do it. God. <laughs> I do not recommend it. For most people, 99% don't do it. Just don't. Avoid it. I'm not saying break up. Just find a way to make it work. You know what I'm saying? Just don't. It's, it's, it's hard. I wouldn't say it's difficult, because it really depends on the person. I am not a texting person. I do not like texting. I do not like constant communication. I am a very, uh, very to the point, you know what I mean, type of person. I don't, I like in person, talking in person. I don't really like texting. I had that problem with my, one of my exes, where... We had constant communication. We were talking. We 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 saw each other a lot, but when it came to texting, I was just like, okay, yes, no, short answers, and uh, I just don't, don't didn't like it. But it turns out it depends. It really really depends on who you're texting, on the situation and circumstances. To me, it's incredible how depending on the person. I, with her, with my current partner, I'm able to, like, I can text forever because <laughs> I just enjoy it. I enjoy talking to her so much that texting is like, hey, that's just the means for me to do it. I mean, it's not, it actually now brings me kind of joy. I don't text any other people like that. <laughs> but hey, it's just the circumstances, okay? So yeah, I don't really recommend it. But I'm going to tell you what has worked and how I feel about my current long distance relationship. Let's talk about what has worked. I have it written on my phone, so if you see me looking down, I'll just have it over here. So, what has worked for my long distance relationship? Number one, secure goal focused relationships. And you have to be okay with being alone. So, you have to be two people, both of you have to be secure, have to have like a a secure attachment style. I think I've heard of that before. You know, there's like a anxious, what does it call it? Like a anxious, to, like a fleeting. To, there's attachment styles where you don't like being close to people. You don't like people to, to, uh, to try to, you know, be with you all the time, grab you. I want to do this with you. I want to do that. And there's a uh, other style that's, that's like you want to. So there's like the person that, that tries to, you know, grab you. And there's the other guy that, doesn't like to be grabbed, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what those other two attachment styles are. I'm not really into that, to investigating all that. I, all I know is that the secure attachment style is basically what I what I what we have and what I recommend. If you are the type of people that need to be constantly talking to your to your significant other or friend, and if you don't talk to them or for whatever reason they don't get back to you right away, you feel very anxious. You feel like why 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 aren't they texting back? Why this? Why aren't they um always texting me right away or don't they want to be with me blah blah blah, blah. and you're the type of person that that um that doesn't like to be constant you know doesn't like constant communication in a way or just doesn't like to be to be feel like felt like um like uh, I, don't, I don't i'm saying enslaved but trapped in a sense where you're like oh i need to talk to her every day like oh no what if no i don't want to I don't want. I want to avoid these tough conversations, and I want to just be free. I don't. Want, I don't like it when when she texts me in the morning, like or good morning or good afternoon, or like ah, uh, just like a little too much. I want to text like every other five or every week, every like week or so. You know what I mean? People who are not like into that. There's a lot of weird shit. In any case, both of you guys have to be secure. But you can't be anxious without being. You can't be anxious if that person isn't texting you back. And you can't be, you know, whatever the other is, where you don't want to text right away or don't want to text in a couple of weeks or months or 
days because I've seen cases. That's that's kind of weird. See what I mean? So next one, be that. Oh, we have to be okay with being alone. I mean, duh. You have a long distance relationship. There's going to be a lot of times where you're not going to hang out with your friends. You're doing other stuff. And normally when you're supposed to, normally when you have your partner, you're there doing stuff with your partner. But either you can't FaceTime them at the time or something else happens. But you have to be okay with being alone. You just have, have to not fear being alone. That's a good thing to have in general. But that's the thing that is a requirement to have a healthy long distance relationship. Oh, let's go to the next one. So, next thing you have to focus on. I locked my phone, damn it. Okay. Yeah. So, constant, non obligatory, or mandatory, however you want, however you understand it. Constant, non mandatory communication. Now, keyword on non mandatory. I feel like a lot of partners are like, make that a rule. When I say you have to be constantly communicating like and non-mandatory, that sounds uh you know like contradicting, right? But what I mean by constant is you have to really know their day. Everybody likes to talk about their day, and people change day by day. People discover new things day by day, or that's how you sh- it should be. And people have like a new story, even if it's a small story, every day. And if you miss out on those days, those stories accumulate. And you're going to miss out on the bigger stories, or the stories that are developing. You know, it could be a short story of what happened to me today. I talked to this person. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And then this and then that, this. And then you start to notice, oh, yeah, she start, she's starting to um, break out of her shell. She isn't as shy as before. But then if you don't talk to her, you don't realize what's going on in a month or two months, you're going to be like, oh, wait. I thought she was shy. I didn't know you liked, you liked uh, to paint. I didn't know you liked to uh, Play soccer. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I used to do this every other, you know what I mean? Every other, every other evening, I played soccer a little bit. And oh, wow, that's something that I would have liked to like to know about here. And people change, not their hobbies, not just their hobbies, but their personality. That's how it is. Especially when you're like in a young age, people people change rapidly. You have to learn to re-love or love the new parts of your partner. How it goes. That's it. You don't really have to learn it, but you know you have to get to know them, get to know them, those new emerging parts. That's basically it. constant communication. That's what I mean by it. And non-mandatory or obligatory means I do not expect my partner to text me back, or to not. Te- I do not expect her to text me today. She will, and definitely I will at least tell her, "Hey, good night." Or, hey, good morning. I'll obviously I, we talk way more than that. But but that's the thing. It's not mandatory. For whatever reason, she doesn't text me and be like, oh, I forgot that day. Like, oh, that won't happen, by the way. That won't happen. Because I know her. And we know each other. We know our like, texting, our schedules. And we try to set aside, even if we have the whole day busy, I'll send her like a little report. And she'll send me her report and I'll listen to it tomorrow. And even if we are online... And we're like, oh, we're online. We're about to go to sleep. How about this? I'm going to send you a report. You're going to send me a report. And we're just going to talk a little bit more. And tomorrow while I work, I'll listen to it. And while she she studies, she listens to it. And then we'll, uh, that's how we'll catch up. And it's nice. It's nice. But let's say for whatever reason, she's super busy and I'm super busy, no signal. I don't expect her to. And I don't feel bad when she doesn't. And vice versa. Do not feel obligated to text. When you feel like you're in a bad mood and you don't want to talk to her or him because you don't want to, you know, give off those bad vibes, don't. Just don't. Tell, be honest. Like, hey, I'm in a bad mood. I don't really want to talk about it. Or I, or I want to talk about it later. Or I'm in a bad mood because of work. and I don't want to, you know, give you that vibe. Um, can we talk tomorrow? See? Just say that. And say that. And she says that to me when I tell her. I normally do it more than her because I have a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of shit that gets into my head that I don't want to, want to give, you know, spit that out to her. So that, that is really great. The, 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 the feeling of not needing to interact when we don't have to or when we don't want to. 
that's perfect. That's healthy. And I think that's completely necessary in long distance. And even in, even in a normal relationship, but especially long distance relationship, when you think, when you feel like the only way of communication is through text or calling constantly, you feel very, very obligated to, to just all every day talk for like an hour or so because that's all you guys can do. So you have to make up for it. So no, 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 dude, relax. You don't, you don't have to, you shouldn't. Next step, next step. Well, you know what I mean. Next, uh, next thing I want to talk about. So healthy texting with spaces, same thing. Basically a little bit more about non-obligatory or mandatory communication, healthy texting. When I'm at work, I don't text her for a while. When I'm in a break, maybe I'll send a text, but normally I don't. Normally I just see the messages. I don't, I don't like to um, put her on red, obviously. But I'll just scope through the notifications. If there's something very, very important, I'll text back to her. And I've told her, I don't want to respond to you if I don't have the time to properly respond to you. I don't want to, I don't want to put an okay. If you send like a bunch of texts, a bunch of questions, a bunch of stuff that I find interesting to talk about. I want to, you know, talk a little bit more, dice, you know, discuss it. I don't want to be like, okay. I could be like, okay, talk to you later. But then that kind of feels like that one text message is like, oh, all right. So it doesn't, the conversation doesn't flow as good. So, but I, but I know I've talked to her a lot and she, she does the same with me. We talk and it, when I have the chance to properly respond to you, because I can properly respond in a 15 minute break, but then where, where does my break go? <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's healthy spaces, healthy spaces. And, you know, that also pairs in with non-mandatory communication. I'm not, you shouldn't feel obligated to communicate on every free free space or free time you have. If it's like a 30-minute free time, you can use that. You have to use that for yourself sometimes, most of the time. So use it. Don't feel don't feel obligated. Don't feel bad of having your, your own time. So that's kind of like my own time. Those 15-minute uh, breaks. I don't text her unless it's something very necessary for for whatever reason. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. Healthy breaks, healthy spaces. Only text when you are completely free, and don't be on your phone all the time because texting that's what it is. You text, oh, I see a YouTube notification, see this and that. So both of us are not very addicted, very, <laughs> are not addicted to our phones, or we try to reduce the amount of phone time as much as possible because we are. Focus, goal, focus, relationship, goal, focus, people. We have stuff to do. So, yeah, do that. Healthy texting with spaces. Next one. Hangouts whenever possible. Now, hangouts whenever possible means a hangout. What's a hangout? Like an hour or 30 minutes of talking, seeing each other, and doing an activity, doing something else. Because you can also talk. You can also talk. Yeah, but. Yeah, I guess that, that also counts as a hangout. You're right. So hanging out could be like talking for 30 minutes through Skype, you know, face-to-face -face or FaceTime or Zoom or all that or Google Meets, you know what I mean? Where you guys can physically talk and hopefully do something, a new activity together. Either draw, write, read, watch a movie, or watch a series, all that shebang, all that stuff. Play a game, you know, all that stuff. I play Minecraft. We watch anime. We watch some movies together, we just chat, sometimes we draw, sometimes we find new online things to play or see, or just like we watch YouTube videos, interesting ones, we just look at articles and we discuss certain topics, stuff like that. So those are hangouts. Sometimes it takes like more than an hour, two or three, but at least, you know, once, once a week or once every two weeks, but depending on your schedule, we should definitely at least strive for once a week. That could also include as a date. You know, try to try to do that at least at least once a week. Don't do it too much because that's the next thing I want to talk about. But yes, you definitely need that that good session, that good really really um let's talk, let's let's do something session. Texting is awesome, but you need that session to really 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 um you know close the gap of feeling far apart or close the gap of of, you know, 
the things that are lost between dots and periods and, and letters through texting, because a lot of things are lost through texting. Even if you text paragraphs, there's a lot of things that are lost. You miss out on their eyes, their communication, how they uh, move around, body, well, that's, but yeah, body language, their expressions, the way she looks at you, the way he looks at you. You miss out on so much. So you need that. You definitely need that. So take time to do that. Next one, um, hangouts and activities alone. Now, hangouts whenever possible. Yes. Hangouts and do activities alone. Yes, as well. Do the balance. But you need that. You definitely need to do some hangouts with your other friends. Because I know sometimes it feels like a long distance relationship. People do the, either one of the two extremes. They hang out so much with their partner that they don't have time for other friends. Or they hang out so much with their friends they don't have time for their partner. So, and that's also, I feel like that's a lot with in person, like not relationships in general. But with long distance relationships, it feels like it's either one of the two extremes. It was like even more extreme. In my case, I still feel somewhat guilty sometimes when I'm hanging out with friends. But the thing is, I am a very goal focused person. I rarely hang out with friends. When I do, it's about once a month or once every two months. I do do something awesome with them, like go to a car show, go to this. And if it's a birthday, like in this case, it's going to be a birthday that I'm going to uh, attend. And it's the same friend that I went to a car show with. So it's going to be two, two weekends or two Sundays that I'm going to spend with them. But I'm not going to spend the whole day in the birthday. So I'll have time to talk to, to my partner that day if, if, um, if we have the the schedule and the time to do so. But I don't hang out with my friends all the time because I'm very goal-oriented. I have stuff to do. If I were to hang out all the time with my friends, well, it would only be fair if I also hang out sometimes with my partner. And that's the thing. You have to do that good ratio between doing something new, having a new experience, and sharing that with your partner and making sure that they're also a part of it. You can't do too much of this too much of doing something new and awesome and changing yourself and not showing that new side of you and sharing that new side of you to your partner because then there, you're going to be a disconnect and the more and more and more shit happens the bigger the disconnect until you're like i don't know you and you don't know me we don't know each other what <laughs> you know what i mean so make sure you have a good ratio of that Good ratio of you growing individually as a person and you hanging out with your other friends and new things to talk about because, you know, you want to talk everything with your partner. But sometimes you have a crazy friend that talks about some random topic that they saw or doing and that brings in a new light of information to your head that you can later talk to your partner about if you if you wish to. You should. So that's that. Do that good ratio. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a long one, but I think this is going to be a very good one. Very good video for myself and for anybody watching and for my future kids. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's another thing. But we'll talk about that later. Um, bigger things. Honest communication. Honest communication. This, is, this isn't this is for a long distance relationship. Now it's going to be, in general, what I feel like are the biggest characteristics that you should have are nailed down, really nailed down if you're going to attempt a long distance relationship now honest communication you have to be completely honest you, you won't have enough time to to really hmm, to really take things slowly with communicating you have to give in the biggest details you have to give big details and the most important details because they're going to be a lot of times long distance relationship or in normal relationships. There aren't going to be times for later. And if you have a conscience and if it's something big, you should have to tell them, tell them right away. Break the ice, break the silence, say, it. I don't know about you, but I can't really hold in, hold in information that, that my partner needs to know. Even if it's something simple or small, like, Hey, like we made a promise. If we made a promise to um, 
do, all right, I'm going to do exercise today, and you're going to do exercise today. We're going to both do exercise today, and I didn't do exercise today. I'm going to tell her, like, next day or next time I talk to her, hey, I fucked up. <laughs> but you told me, yeah, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I just, uh, excuses, excuses, excuses. Yeah, I make excuses. My bad. I suck, but I'll get better, I promise. Okay, you better. All right, fine, I'll, I'll try, I'll try. So... Even if it makes you look bad, especially if it makes you look bad, say it. Be honest. That's something that I really emphasize on because I used to struggle so much with that when I was a kid. I used to be a very, very good liar. An amazing liar. I can't, I can't, I could lie. But I feel like now, I like I have the ability to, but I don't have the conscience enough to lie. I, I, I can physically pull it off because i think i could be an actor <laughs> but i don't have the conscience enough to do it to do so like my conscience my conciencia in spanish wouldn't let me it would not let me and you have to have be honest honest with yourself if you suck you have to say it out loud i suck at this if you have a problem with addiction with anything you have to say it I have a problem with this. I'm going to fix it, but I will recognize that I have this problem. Don't lie about little stuff. Why would you lie about little stuff? Don't lie about the tiniest things because the devil's in the details. And like I said, if you don't recognize the tiny things, those accumulate until it snowballs effect until something really big. And then you're going to be living a bunch of lies. You don't even know who you are. Who you are. So how do you know, how do you know how to improve if you don't know who you are and what you have? No, I'm not, you know, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying, like, I'm pissed off. Like, why? So, honest communication with your partner, with yourself, in general. Honest communication. Honest communication. Damn it. This is something that everyone has to work with. I have to work with that. Another thing that I realize is also giving the small details, too. Give the big details, the most important ones. And then give the small ones, because sometimes the devil is in the details. The devil is in the, the the small the small words that you have to really say, you know? And maybe it's not important to you, but it is important to them. And sometimes you sometimes you think they got what you were trying to say across. Because sometimes some things are really hard to say. And you can give small details about it, thinking that, okay, he's gonna she's gonna catch that hint. So, so, so yeah, I, d I made a mistake with this, and yeah, you know, like, oh, okay, I forgive you. Like, no, you have to say, it. I made a mistake, I fucked up, I did this, specifically. Because there might be, there might be the situation that I had recently where, where I didn't give enough details, and they thought it was something else, they thought, and I really felt bad, because I felt like I lied, because it was hard for me to say. But, but, you know, talking to her, she said, oh, okay, I get it, I understand. I thought she understood, but, but, yeah, just, just, even if it hurts, just say it clearly. Clear, honest communication. Next one. Oh, my God, I don't want to make this too long, but I think this is very important. Okay. Mm, oh, plans to meet, make plans to meet and be each other, even if it's far out. I remember when I when I first arrived here to the United States after I lived ten years in Colombia, about eight or nine ish years, or like eight or eight or nine. I think I think it was nine. Nine going to, going to ten, but I like saying ten. It's, is that lying? It's an exaggeration, but I shouldn't exaggerate. It was nine. Nine eight. I don't remember. But in any case, um yeah. I came here about two thousand twenty two. And I went to visit her and my mother in 2023. Yeah, this is the past. I, did I go in 2022? I went 2022, 23, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's 2022, March 2022. So I spent December here. And then I spent next December 2023 going into 2024 um, with them. Now... I wanted that same year, 2022, to be in December with them again, because that's a tradition that I have with my family and friends, but I wasn't able to. That really sucked. That really bummed me up. 
really bummed her out. But we we had to just push through it. She she was bummed out, but but she, she I was even more bummed out. So she kind of got out of that bum bummed out like the, the the sense of you know like being sad to help me up. And I I mean I was pretty strong too. I'm like oh, this is affecting me. But she could sense it. She could sense how I was bummed out. Got that that sadness, that winter sadness. So whatever. Getting kind of tired of talking. Damn, I haven't talked that much in a while. Um, yeah. So, with that, we were able to schedule something, make a plan to meet last year, or, you know, this December that just passed, December 2023. And thanks to that, we we always felt like, oh, okay, we're going to see each other. Even if it's far out, okay, we're going to see each other. This, on when we had these hard times with having a long-distance relationship, we were just always thinking, you know, this isn't that bad, but it's going to be better when I see you. So, so we just always have a plan to meet. Even if you can't get to it, we were as far out, just always have a plan. I'm going to do a little pause to just relax a little bit. Okay, we're back. You only have two things left to talk about, so we're going to make this a little quick. Now, enjoy what you can do. I'm reading it here. Enjoy what you can do. Enjoy what you can do. There's a lot of things you can't do in a long-distance relationship, or in a normal relationship. Maybe it's time-wise. You both guys are studying, this and that. In my case, you know, distance. So enjoy what you can do. It's not the best. Maybe it's a little bit repetitive, but you got to think outside the box. You got to enjoy your the quality of time, the quality of, you know, seeing each other through Skype. You just have to enjoy it. Enjoy what you can do. Don't think about what you can't. Don't think about how you guys are far away, how you guys can't touch each other, you know, hand, hold hands, that's what I mean. Hug, kiss, whatever. Don't think about that. Don't think about how you can't go to the mall together, do this, do that. No, no, don't think about that. Think about what you can do right now to make this moment, this evening, this hangout, this talk, this call, this, this text, this talk a little more unique. You know, make it make it stand out or make it worthwhile. It's always worthwhile, but make it, you know, more. Yeah, just just enjoy. Just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the moment, squeeze, like, enjoy it. Like squeeze everything out of every moment that you can and what you can do. All right, that and the final one is have tough conversations. Have the tough conversations. Sometimes it's hard. For people to schedule it out. You have to schedule it out. I know when someone says, I need to talk to you, you want to hear it right away. And that shouldn't be it. You have to wait for it. And if you know your partner is the type of people who want to hear it now, 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 they'll stop everything, then tell them when you have a free time, like there's something I want to talk to you. It's your job to then plan it out. Say, hey, look, hey, are, you gonna be, are we going to be free? What are we going to do at four? Oh, no, how about we chill? And then when you guys start chilling, like, okay, is it okay I could talk to you about something real quick? See what I mean? So plan it out. If your partner is the type of people who wants, wants to hear it now, or if you're the type of person who wants to just get out the way, get out the way, sometimes it isn't the best time for a partner either. So if you're the type of people who wants to get out, like, I, I feel this certain way, I'm going to tell you right now, but he's super busy, or he's depressed, or he's stressed, or he's something, he or she, then just wait a little bit. Wait, wait until he's he's okay, he has other things to sell, he or she, and then tell him. Then tell him. Plan it out. Find the best time to say it. Always find a time to say it. And if if it is, if it makes you feel a certain way, like, there are times where I want to tell my partner some things that I I don't I don't necessarily enjoy that that she does. I'm like I don't really like this, but I don't want to tell her right now since she's enjoying it, <laughs> or she's you know she's enjoying uh, this activity in this movie or this or that. Well, movies are pretty dumb. Of course, I'll tell her that I don't like this movie. Let's change. But something you know more important, something more important, something that is a little harder to say. 
if this makes you feel like a certain type of way, like you cannot um, go through the day with this on your chest, then then I would say yes, you need to you need to put put them put them aside and really really talk about it. But if it's something that you can live a couple of days with, do it. Please do it. Sometimes there's some stupid shit <laughs> that that I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. You give it a couple of days. And you're like, that's so stupid. That's so dumb. I don't even care anymore. So that's okay. But if it's a recurring thing, then maybe it's time to talk. But if it's not, then just live with, live with it. Tolerate. Tolerate. Got to tolerate things. Sometimes you got to tolerate. Because remember, they are tolerating you too. And a lot. She tolerates me way more than I tolerate her. That's for sure. And that's something I'm working on. I'm tolerating. I gotta be more tolerated. Tolerant to. You know what I mean. That's it. I'm gonna wrap it up here. I hope. Hope this helps. Have like an insight of how, how I do it, how we do it, how it has worked so far, and how I, every day it has gone better and better in my relationship and. Uh, I'm going to tell you this, I feel like I won the lottery, and I don't want to jinx it, <laughs> but help. But putting this video together and talking about it really screws it into my brain of the things that I should keep on doing and what I shouldn't. So I'm going to use this as a recap to keep on going. And I hope you have a, a good day.